Weekend volatility is back, and whether you're happy about this move or not, I guess depends on whether you ended up on the right or the wrong side of the trade. Hey guys, it's Keith Allen. Hope you had a good weekend. Hope you protected your profits here and didn't get uh, annihilated. As you can see, price just came dumping through the trend line here, uh, broke that support, and uh, created, I guess, the first lower low here, uh, and then went and approached the second lower low. And this was a bit of a controversy, different on different exchanges here on Coinbase. Um, it didn't quite make it to the lower low, but it did, of course, you know, close enough to call this a double bottom, which we are, of course, seeing a, a nice bounce from uh, brand new. Uh, trend precognition signal came off of that uh, both on both algos, the A2 plus arrow and the A1 dot confluence between those two algos always is a good thing to see, um, but different on different exchanges, right? If we look at um, uh, Bitstamp, for example, uh, we had our that second that lower low was here at around sixty thousand seven sixty, and here at sixty one thousand three oh eight. That's not even close enough for me to call a double bottom here uh, on uh, on Bitstamp. But uh, on Binance, uh, things did break through, uh, just wicking slightly below. That creates a second lower low, uh, which isn't what you want to see. Um, and in my mind. Uh, the, I guess the saving grace is it's not that far to where, um, you know, that uh, that lowest of lower lows is that would be the one that you really, really want to protect around 59K. Um, uh, of course, uh, these purple lines, by the way, that would be MTF uh, mean reversion indicator. And it did pick up some orders on that dip. Uh, so for those of looking to buy those dips, this was a good way to do that. Uh, and I did exactly just that and uh, added to my position uh, down here uh, as well. So um, back to uh, this main chart here, um, you know, again, a double bottom here is good to see because we're seeing some strength coming off of it. Uh, whether this was a lower low on the exchange you're on or not. Um, yeah, kind of important, I, I guess, but you know, the downside is limited in terms of what the second lower, the third lower low would be. And that's the one that really, uh, concerns me here at 59 K, uh, at the moment that seems to be protected and resistance happening here at the trend line. Let's switch on the, uh, moving averages and see if we have any confluence there. And, uh, lo and behold, it looks like we do as the 50 day. Uh, moving average uh, lays up nicely uh, along that trend line and you can see we're running into resistance there so want to see that cleared as well as the 21 and then of course we're going back after this 2021 top right that was an area of long time resistance and uh, it has been a tough one uh, for us to beat so um, you know that's what we need to be watching for in terms of you know near-term price action and and sure, we could go back down and visit this area before this is all said and done. But in the mean, you know, at the moment, um, this is where the drama uh, is is happening. Let's take a look over at fire charts and see uh, how liquidity has moved relative to this uh, volatility. And the first thing I notice here on the three year chart is a um, a ladder of bid liquidity from from down here in the in the forty k to 35 ish 34 35 ish range uh, has moved up above 50k so you know that to me uh, points to the fact that there is sentiment shifting upwards from here there wasn't a lot down here to begin with but what was there um, a significant amount of it has moved up and of course uh, our, our primary support is down here at the 59 to 60K level. Um, the fact that it's still so much brighter liquidity, ask liquidity slash resistance so much heavier overhead, uh, that's a problem. And I don't expect to see Bitcoin break past this until we start seeing some brighter spots down here closer to the uh, local price range. Let's zoom it in now to the monthly and see if we can get a little bit more granular with this. And here we can see that we do have just little incremental moves upwards, trying to push price back up into, you know, and above the 69K level. Not a ton. Well, let's see. This is not a ton of resistance here at 69K in terms of ask liquidity, um, but a lot right overhead. All right. So this still remains very difficult to break, in my opinion, seeing more bids come into this range is a positive thing. We want to see them stacking upward, 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 and we want to see them concentrating more heavily. I want to see some brighter spots here. Uh, that's what I'm, that's basically what I'm looking for. Uh, down on the weekly, 
um, you know, same set of circumstances. You can see we have, you know, these, these darker zones create opportunities for volatility. So we could go back down and, and revisit this. But as long as this keeps building up here or building down here, I should say, um, and we see incremental moves like this where bids will step up, you know, the ladder moves up a bit. Um, that is uh, an early indication that they're trying to push price up here. Now, obviously, the geopolitical tension is something that weighs heavily uh, on a lot of the markets, um, at least this one in particular. Uh, and, you know, we await to see what the response is going to be. That could change the dynamic. Um, certainly can. And here on the daily chart, same thing. You see where the uh, less liquid zones are that we need to be concerned about. Um, real briefly, you know, something that this this did highlight for us this weekend was um, the fact that, well, here's a major difference between ETF uh, investors and Bitcoin investors. And one of those things, obviously, aside from not being able to hold any Bitcoin, uh, and yes, they did have a little bit of outflow on, uh, on Friday. Um, the biggest difference is that uh, they were not able to capitalize on the volatility and buy that dip, right? Market hasn't even opened yet. Price has already recovered to where they were. So for them, hey, they got to enjoy the weekend and weren't even um, really uh, uh, able to do anything about the volatility. And maybe they end up uh, in better shape for doing so because price has basically recovered to where they were on Friday. Um, but if, you know, I personally... Uh, like the opportunity to have been able to buy more Bitcoin at a lower price. So that's what works for me. You do, of course, what works for you. Uh, that's going to wrap it for today because I have a live stream coming up here in a little while. So I will drop the link to that before we start. Um, uh, and we'll go in a little bit more in depth. It's supposed to be on with Trading Parrot uh, later today. So hopefully uh, we're able to pull that one off and uh, put together something more insightful for you guys. In the meantime, uh, as always, nothing I say or share on these streams should be considered trading advice of any way, shape, or form. Trading is risky. Do your own research. Manage your risk, okay? You got to manage your risk so you can stay in this game for the long haul. I heard some people or read some posts this weekend like, oh, it's a black swan. No. A black swan is not a 13, 14, 15% move. Black swan goes deeper than that, at least in my history. Uh, they go way deeper than that. So I don't consider what we saw uh, over the weekend to be a black swan event, at least not as of yet. Um, it could certainly develop into one, but it doesn't look like uh, like that's the case uh, at the moment anyways. And the fact the price is recovering, very good to see. Shows the resilience and strength of this market without a doubt. And the having is really just coming up rapidly approaching right what we got we're um like five days five days away less than a week away so we got that going for us don't think for a bit don't think for a second that we can't see more dips though right and and i'm just going to leave you with one one last one parting thought here right i've shared this with you guys before and i'm going to share it again am i on the right chart here chart here no i'm not let me switch to this one um I just want to, you know, reiterate the point that these dips can, they have, and they can, and they will happen again around these having events. Don't think that it's up only after the having. All right, we've got a lot of history with these events, and look at this: twenty percent dump just before it, twenty percent dump just after it. It happens, and it will happen time and time again. So don't be spooked by this. Right? Know that it's coming. Be prepared for it. Save some powder for it. But. Uh, Hopefully, we're going to see things start to appreciate once we cross this once we cross this line here uh, in well just a week, right? So um, I expect maybe we're going to see some people rallying into the having, and then potentially we see another dump right after it, and then uh, hopefully the cycle continues as uh, as a lot of us are hoping it will, right? Uh, with, I'm going to leave it at that, guys. Again, I got a live stream coming up later today, and uh, we'll drop the link for that uh, before we start the show. Let's make it a great week, guys. It's going to be a big one.